My name is Aaron Bushnell. I am an active member, duty member of the United States Air Force and I will no longer be complicit in genocide. Thus began the final message of Aaron Bushnell who self-immolated to protest Israel's genocidal war on Gaza. As he fell victim to the flames, his last words were free Palestine. Aaron Bushnell sacrificed his life for a cause he believed in. The same cause has led millions of people across the world to take to the streets time and again, rejecting Israel's brutality and calling for the lives and rights of Palestinian people to be safeguarded. However, those in power in the United States and other countries in the West have refused to heed these calls. They have repeated the same tired old talking points, justifying Israel's horrific actions as self-defense. They have vacuously and vaguely talked about peace while taking actions that explicitly permit war to continue. What would I do if my country was committing genocide? That was the question Aaron Bushnell asked. That is a question that is staring at the faces of the leaders of many countries today. Whether they have the integrity to answer this question is another matter altogether. In today's episode of Daily Debrief, we go to Abdul to talk about the life and times of Aaron Bushnell, the responses to his act of protest and the situation in Gaza today. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. Aaron Bushnell's uh, sacrifice, the act of protest, one of the most powerful acts of protest since the war began. Uh, people have, for instance, pointed out to many uh, other incidents in throughout history. Uh, but before we go into some of the other aspects of, you know, what the reception, you know, what has been the kind of response and large issues about the war itself, what do we know about uh, this young man who uh, committed this act? You know, what do we know about Aaron Bushnell and what was this, uh, you know, what happened with him? Uh, well, Prashant, as per the limited information which we have in the media uh, and through his social uh, media posts, uh, which is there in public, uh, apparently Bushel was uh, working with the U.S. Air Force. He was, uh, uh, of course, working on desk, of course, not in the field. And he has been quite, uh, as per the report, uh, as per the reports uh, which are uh, coming from his friends and close uh, people uh, in his uh, vicinity, they uh, they claim that he was one of those disciplined cadres who believed in the. Uh, he he had a very strong feeling of what is right and wrong. He believed in uh, uh, though he was working in the air force, he had a certain. Uh, uh, positions which were quite uh, unmilitary-like, which were quite politically, you can say, uh, pro-people, pro-kind uh, pro of, uh, 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 you can say, uh, uh, policies which are opposed to the kind of role U.S. has been playing all across the world. And he has a very strong feeling of kind of uh, uh, solidarity with the people uh, in Palestine who have been suffering uh, because of the war uh, which is going on since October 7, and not only be, uh, since October 7, for uh, all the occupation and the role uh, the U.S. has been playing uh, in sustaining that occupation. He has a very strong, had a very strong opinion uh, against all that thing, and he was opposed to all that thing. And and uh, what he did basically uh, on uh, on 26th of February, basically uh, in, in because of his uh, anger against uh, the policy which the US has been following and Israel has been what Israel has been doing inside Gaza uh, and uh, his you can say his helplessness to oppose it in in any other way he went to the extreme of kind of uh, uh, sacrificing his life in front of uh, the Israeli embassy in Washington DC and uh, uh, while the the video which has come uh, from which was uh, uh, recorded uh, at the time uh, of his uh, uh, kind of sacrifice is basically uh, shows that he says that what us is doing in um, with the people in palestine he can no longer be complicit with that particular uh, act of uh, 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 genocide and uh, he wanted uh, that his uh, sacrifice should give a message that such uh, policy should be changed it should uh, no longer be uh, uh, carried forward and uh, the genocide in gaza should stop and palestine should be free right abdul uh, of course uh, this uh, comes at a time, like, like I was saying earlier, that you know millions of people across the world taking to protest. In fact, after this incident uh, took place, another earlier report came to light of somebody else who had also committed, you know, uh, staged a protest similarly in Atlanta, I believe, outside uh, a similar uh, 
uh, you know, similar f facility, so to speak. And it kind of shows, I think, even within the United States, but across the world, the kind of very powerful sentiment that is there. But one thing we have sort of seen is how um, both uh, the US media uh, has sort of, you know, uh, tried to, uh, it seems that the media is desperate to, uh, uh, you know, uh, avoid the fact that this was an act of protest. They have tried every kind of interpretation except stating the fact very clearly, which is that uh, his was an act, it was an extreme act of protest against this war. Exactly. In fact, uh, if you see even the leading newspapers, the quote-unquote quote well-reputed uh, newspapers which are considered uh, the newspapers of record, basically even they, their kind of reporting they have done is basically an attempt to hide the actual facts from the people. They are tempted, of course, thanks to the social media and other alternative media which is there, the facts cannot be suppressed the way it could have been uh, otherwise. But still, they tried very hard to do that. And of course, that uh, that shows that how complicit they are in the entire uh, process of uh, sustaining the occupation uh, uh, in Palestine, in basically aiding and uh, uh, the in his, uh, Israel's war against Palestinians, and this is not only in this incident. And by the way, this exposes uh, their complicity, but uh, they have been doing it for ages. Uh, if you see how, uh, for example, uh, the killing of a Palestinian girl is reported as if a Palestinian person is killed accidentally, and there was no uh, 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 responsible. Party obviously Israelis Israeli armed forces are responsible for the killing of a person, but even such headlines are also manipulated in order to hide uh, uh, their uh, kind of uh, the war uh, the brutality of war. This is an attempt to dehumanize Palis Palestinians, and in order in a, in a uh, attempt to basically uh, kind of create. A, a fake legitimacy for uh, 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 for the occupation uh, to continue uh, and and in fact in fact justify the brutal acts against Palestinian in one way or another. So uh, uh, media, not only in US, by the way, even that several other uh, uh, newspapers and well, well known media houses in uh, other countries in Western Europe, for example, have carried out similar headlines, kind of attempt to hide it. And one should also uh, understand. Uh, uh, see it as an attempt to basically help the U.S. state and the U.S. forces uh, in a way to kind of uh, uh, have less guilt about what they are doing and how they, it is making the people in Israel, uh, sorry, in U.S. desperate uh, kind of, uh, uh, because this is uh, really something which they do not agree with. If you see the kind of protests which are ha which are happening all across the U.S., of course, they do not like the involvement of their state uh, in the act of genocide. They do not uh, a kind of uh, uh, condone the acts of genocide committed by Israelis. But if you keep on lying to them that this is happening with a particular context that the Palestinians are uh, responsible for what is happening to them, Hamas is responsible for what is happening to them. In basically, in it's an attempt to basically blame the victims and to kind of seek uh, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of attempt to uh, guilt, uh, kind of wash away their own guilt, and that's what the media has been doing. This is an attempt to kind of justify the war. Uh, justify the complicity of, of the U.S. administration in the war, and also to kind of wash away their own guilt. So this uh, this is happening for a very long time, and uh, Bushnell's uh, 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 sacrifice has the way it has been portrayed, re uh, uh, kind of uh, kind of re it kind of makes it much more obvious for us to see. Well, and moving on to the uh, war itself, it's cl we are cl uh, coming close to 145 days, I believe. Uh, the death toll is around almost 30,000. So where, you know, what are the contours of the Israeli assault right now? What are the, you know, what has been happening on the ground? Uh, and now we, before, after that, we'll move on to talk to the ceasefire also. Well, as per uh, the latest reports which are coming from Gaza, of course, the situation uh, is uh, not... Uh, different from what we have discussed before. Uh, in fact, it has become worse, uh, particularly because of the uh, tremendous uh, choking of the humanitarian aid, which was uh, for a while was flowing, uh, not very 
uh, it, it, there was no improvement but at least what where whatever was the condition few uh, weeks ago it has deteriorated further and uh, uh, this goes contrary to what I, uh, international court of justice has said so ever since the international court of justice had opined that palestinians should have more access to humanitarian aid the humanitarian aid has gone down israel has repeatedly said that they will carry out uh, uh, attacks on rafa um, and uh, they have not uh, uh, kind of gone back to that despite the pressure created by the global community by the neighboring arab countries there and other humanitarian groups all across from all across the world that this should not be done uh, the attacks in different other parts of gaza continues uh, uh, as you rightly pointed out the uh, the, the palestinians killed uh, every 24 hours the number increases uh, many folds and it is now reaching 30000 uh, almost 30000 palestinians have been killed um, Apart from Gaza, if you see, there are also attacks, increased attacks inside West Bank. Uh, uh, in last few uh, hours, there have there are reports coming that there are there are attacks to certain areas carried out by the Israeli military in which a couple of Palestinians have been killed and uh, thousands of. Uh, now, by the way, one uh, crucial fact that if there is an uh, ceasefire deal, there will be exchange of prisoners, but. Before that happens, the number of Palestinians inside uh, the Israeli jail in, in, is basically reaching 10,000 now, which is uh, before the war, we should remember that it was less than 5,000. So almost doubled. So yeah, so that is the situation on the ground. Uh, more Palestinians are being killed. The humanitarian uh, aid is not... Uh, uh, Israel has been depriving Palestinians from the basic humanitarian aid. In fact, there are reports coming from the northern Gaza, starvation people, again, who went back to northern Gaza if, despite the war. There are reports coming that they are now moving back again to the southern parts in order to get access to. Uh, it is considered that in southern parts, because it is closer to Rafah border, there is greater access to humanitarian aid and so on and so forth. So this is the desperate situation on the ground in Gaza at the moment when the ceasefire talks are going on. All right, Abdul, finally, if you could tell us what exactly, you know, the talks that are going on, what seem to be the details that are emerging as of now, the possible conditions from both sides. Well, uh, very few uh, details are there in the public domain uh, uh, as per now. Uh, uh, as per the reports, uh, there will be a temporary ceasefire. Of course, this is not a permanent ceasefire. At maximum, uh, the media says 40 days, uh, considering the uh, Ramadan is coming uh, and therefore Israel has agreed to kind of ceasefire during this uh, one month and additional days. Uh, in exchange, of course, of uh, hostages, uh, the numbers which are reported in the media is 40 hostages against 400 Palestinian prisoners inside the Israeli jail. jail. That will be uh, uh, the term. Uh, apart from that, the, uh, of course, Israel also agreed to increase the flow of humanitarian aid. But one should remember that the, uh, the amount of humanitarian aid which was flowing before a uh, few weeks ago has already gone down uh, uh, to a, a very basic level, very few trucks, around 90 trucks, even less than 90 trucks are allowed every day against the 150 or something odd trucks were moving a, a few weeks earlier. So even if Israel says that the uh, number of, uh, uh, sorry, the, the amount of humanitarian aid will be increased, we do not know exactly how much it will increase. Will it go back to 150 again? which will not be an increase in, in actual terms. So these are the terms which are there in the public domain. Of course, Hamas has said, uh, unlike what ba Biden was claiming, that by Monday there will be a ceasefire uh, 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 on the ground. But Hamas today, uh, sorry, Hamas on uh, Tuesday said that uh, uh, it may, may be premature to say that on Monday there will be ceasefire because they are not very happy with the terms which are there uh, uh, with them, of course, but still the talk is going on and uh, uh, there is a hope that uh, there will be some kind of uh, ceasefire deal agreed uh, in few uh, in couple of days from now. Abdul, thank you so much for all that updates.
That's all we have in today's episode. We'll be back with a fresh daily debrief tomorrow. In the meantime, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Thank <laughs> you.